I've got this HLG file and this was shot with an Osmo Pocket 3, but it could have been with a drone or something like that. And the first thing we're gonna do is come up to the file menu and come down here and choose project settings. You wanna make sure you switch to the color management section and we're gonna to wanna to change the top section. For the color science, choose DaVinci YRGB. For the timeline color space, you wanna change this to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And for the output color space, this is where you want to set up the fact that you want to export the final video as HDR and not standard definition or Rec 709. So for this, you wanna come down here and you want to find Rec 2020 ST 2084 1000 nits. You want to make sure this tick box is checked and this is set to 1000 nits. And then just come down here and click save. So now we've set up our project settings, we're gonna right click on this footage and choose create new timeline using selected clips. And we'll just go and create a demo timeline. Next, we can switch over to the color page and then start the color grading process. It's gonna make a bit of space here. We're gonna need two nodes to start with. So I'm gonna hit Alt S on the keyboard to add a second node. And then we're gonna open up the effects and we're gonna come down here and grab this color space transform effect and drag it over the top of the first node. If we click on that first node, you can see the color space transform effect parameters here. Now what we want to do is we want to take the HLG footage and we're gonna technically transform it into something called DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And this is a really big working space where we can do all of the color grading changes before we then finally export it as our final export, which will be a HDR export. And the reason we convert to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate is because it's a massive color space and we can confidently move things around wherever we want without us degrading the colors by working in a too narrow color space, especially if we're gonna be exporting something as HDR, which is gonna give us a bigger color gamut anyway than something like Rec. 709. So in this example, we need to map the input color space, which is going to be our HLG footage. So what we're going to do here for the input color space, we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna choose Rec. 2100. For the input gamma, we're gonna scroll down here again and we're going to choose Rec 2100 HLG Scene. The output color space from this effect is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. So this first node is taking our HLG footage and it's transforming it to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. At the end of this color grading pipeline, we're going to add another color space transform. In this node, we're gonna take that DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate data and we're gonna transform it to the thing that we want to export. So in the input color space, we're gonna start off with DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate because that's what's coming out of this node. And for the output, we're going to choose Rec 2100 and for the output gamma, we're gonna choose, if we scroll down here all the way near the bottom, we're gonna choose ST2084 1000 nit. And now we can go and close the effects. And between these two nodes, we can actually do the color grading changes that we want. At this point, if you do have a HDR color grading monitor set up, you should start to see the image on the screen look pretty good. The image on my screen doesn't look that great at the minute. It's very low contrast and very washed out and the colors really aren't where they need to be. That's because this monitor that I'm using down here for DaVinci Resolve that I'm screen recording right now is not a HDR monitor, but we'll get to that later in the video. So now we can go and perform some actual creative color grading. I'm going to right click here and choose add node or you could hit Alt S on the keyboard and we'll do that another two times. I'm just gonna do a really basic color grade here. In this first node, we're gonna modify the exposure. So maybe we bring that down just a bit. And as a quick tip, notice I've got this waveform scope set up here and it's actually showing me the HDR version of this. If I click on these three dots and come down to scale Notice that I've set this to HDR. You could set this to percentage, but in this case, because we're working with HDR color grading, I'm setting this to HDR, and it's telling us that it's ST2084 there. And this thousand nits mark is what we're aiming for. So we don't want these lines to go above this 1000 mark. In this next node, we can do some contrast work. And in this final node, we can do any changes to the color, 
I'm just keeping this really simple workflow for now and come over to the HDR palette. And if you click on these buttons here, you can see what these different wheels are going to target. So let's just change the highlight exposure just to try and make these white clouds pop a bit. And we might want to, if I zoom in here, we might want to do something with these shadows just to bring them up a bit, depending on how much of a HDR look you want. So at this point, you might be wondering how on earth do I actually know if my HDR image is going to look good on a HDR display like a TV or a phone or something like that if I don't have a HDR color grading monitor? Well, there's three ways you can do this. The first way is to actually do an export, which I'll show you the settings for in a second, and then maybe put that exported video file on a USB drive, plug it into your TV if it's a HDR TV, and then play it back on the TV and you'll get an idea of if you're or HDR color grading it looks decent or not. The second method is to send the exported video file to your phone via Dropbox or AirDrop or something. And assuming your phone is a HDR phone, like a modern iPhone or something, it's going to give you a really good idea of what that's going to look like if you play back the HDR video on your phone. And the third suggestion is a bit more convenient, but it can be a little bit tricky to set up, and that's to use the remote color grading feature of DaVinci Resolve. And I've currently got this set up and running if I show you that might be a bit blown out on the camera there but I've got this set up so that this is actually displaying a feed from DaVinci Resolve in real time so as I'm changing the color grading settings I can get an idea of what it's going to look like on a HDR display because this phone is a HDR display. I've got a whole video dedicated to setting up that remote monitoring which I'll put a link to in the video description. All right on to exporting. I'm going to switch over to the deliver tab and we'll give this a name we're going to set this to QuickTime H265. And a really important thing down here is you want to change this encoding profile from main to main 10. That's going to make sure that the video file that gets output is 10 bit. All of these settings I'm using here are to upload to YouTube and make sure that YouTube recognizes this as a HDR video file upload. If you're delivering to someone else that requires specific HDR format, then you'll have to modify some of the things that we've been doing in this video. But I've tested this and this works fine with YouTube. YouTube recognizes this as a HDR upload once it's been processed. So once you've made sure that the encoding profile is set to main 10, we can add to the render queue and render that video. Once that's rendered I'll show you another quick tip to double check that your exported video is in the correct format for YouTube. So what you want to do is head over to media info online and then we're going to drag this file that we just exported over here and it's going to interrogate that media file and show us all of the settings for that video. The things that you want to make sure of here is that bit depth is set to 10 bits in your exported video file. You want to check that the color primaries are BT2020. You're going to want to make sure that the transfer characteristics are PQ. You can also export as HLG and upload that to YouTube, but in this case, we're using PQ. And you wanna make sure that the matrix is BT2020 non-constant. So once you're sure that those things are set correctly, you can then go and upload that video file to YouTube. And after a while, when you watch it back on a HDR capable device, you should see it be recognized as a HDR video.